Hey, what's up guys and girls and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about classes. Sorry, classes, no, classes. There we go. Classes and more generally object oriented programming is fundamental to becoming any sort of software engineer, whether you wanna be a data scientist, a mobile app developer, a backend engineer, you're gonna to need to know about classes. In this video, we will start with the basics. What are classes? How can we define them in Python? When and why should we use them? And as we go throughout the video, we'll build up some more advanced concepts. You know, we'll talk about subclassing, we'll talk about operator overloading, and I'm gonna to try to make it very visual so you can really drill down these concepts quickly and efficiently. Before I begin, I wanna give a quick shout out to this video's sponsor and that is Kite. Kite is a machine learning based code completion tool for Python that works with all of the most popular editors like Atom, VS Code, Sublime, Vim, and PyCharm. Kite helps you code faster by giving you all sorts of code completion suggestions sorted by relevance. And it can give you completions that are up to full lines of code, which is really cool. If you're interested in checking out Kite, I left a link in the description. I have been playing around with Kite for about a month now and I've had a very, very good experience. It's super fun and it has made me code faster. One of the best parts I forgot to mention is it is completely free to download. So definitely check out that link in the description. But uh, without further ado, let's get into this video. To start off, I want to give a little bit of background on why we should use classes. So when I was at MIT, we had a model that if you wanted to write good code, it should be safe from bugs, easy to understand, and ready for change. And classes and object-oriented programming really hit on these three points. They make our code safe from bugs by allowing us to kind of isolate the different parts of our system. We can easily write test cases for one specific class while abstracting away the details of the other dependencies. They make our code easy to understand by providing structure to our code. We can group all of the variables and methods that kind of share an object and functionality together and separate objects from one another. And then they make our code ready for change. We can easily add new class methods to existing objects. And if we ever need to provide completely new functionality, we can always make a new object while kind of not screwing up anything else we've already written. I can only teach you so much though by telling you all of this. Let's start writing some code so you can really get a hang of it yourself. I'll be using Python 3 and Sublime Text as my editor. And let's start off by writing our first class. Uh, and I want this, this tutorial to be very visual, so I'm gonna be using shapes as kind of my example to start off. So let's define a class called Polygon. And so the convention to do this is class, and then usually you define your class with a capital letter. So we have this Polygon class. So polygons, triangles, squares, pentagons, hexagons, etc. That's what we're gonna be defining with this class. So to start off, when we define a polygon, we define it with a certain number of sides and a name or something. So when we initialize stuff in a class, we always use this convention. And it might seem a little bit weird at first, but you'll see throughout this tutorial uh, why it's useful. So we do def init, and then the first parameter we always pass in to our init method is self, and then we need to think about what's important to a polygon. Well, maybe the number of sides is important, whether you know you have four sides in our square or if you have five sides in our pentagon, and maybe we want to give it a name too. So we define our polygons by the number of sides and the name. And the last step whenever we're initializing things, and this will not make sense at first, but as I go through, it will make sense. We do self.sides equals sides and self.name equals name. Okay, with that, we've defined our first class. Let's see a couple examples of us using this class in action. So I'm gonna start off by defining a square, which is equal to a polygon. And based on what we set in this init, we will have to pass in sides and name. So to define a polygon, we'll have to pass in the sides. And so let's define a square that has four sides, and then we'll give it the name square. And let's also define a pentagon. So a pentagon is a polygon with five sides and the name pentagon. Cool. Cool. And now what we can do is I can do print square dot sides. And as you can see, it says four down here. I can do print square dot name 
and it says square. So we've basically what's happened is by feeding in these parameters, four and square, we have passed in, we have created a polygon class. And when we pass these in, we set the sides and we set the name through this init method. And as you can see with Pentagon, pentagon.sides and then we can do print pentagon.name. The same thing is true for the Pentagon. So we've captured, we've kind of encapsulated the information through this polygon class of a square and a Pentagon. And to quickly clarify, the only things we need to pass into our init method, so when we're initializing the polygon, is the stuff after this, this the stuff after self, uh, the sides and name. I'm gonna get to self in a little bit in this video, but just keep in mind that when you're creating these objects, you just have to worry about the stuff after self. Now it's cool to be able to see all this information about the classes we've initialized, but let's move on and do something actually cooler, and that's actually draw the shapes based on the parameters we pass into the class. So to do that, we can define a class method. So I'm gonna define a class method called draw. And normally when I define a method, if I don't need to pass in any variables, we can just do it like this, draw, and you know, and you know, insert the functionality here as we need to. But because this is a class method, the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is pass in self to this method. And we're gonna slowly start building up what self is, but basically we have these properties in our class, sides and name. We pass in self to our class method to allow us to access these parameters without having to like manually type in sides, name, um, every time we want to use this function. So we can just access them by passing in self. And this will make sense in a sec. And also we need a way to actually draw the polygon. So to do that, let's import the tur turtle library. It's a nice, easy visual library for Python. And something cool to mention, I don't know if you just saw the right side of my screen, but I'm currently using Kite Copilot. And something that's really cool about it is that it tracks my cursor location on the screen and can tell me all sorts of documentation about where I'm at in the code, um, which is very, very nice. And if you know my videos, I'm always dragging in Google searches for documentation. So this is a really useful feature for me uh, to kind of like know the documentation as I write the code. Okay, so we're gonna import the turtle library and we want to draw our shape. So the way we can think about it is we need a for loop for each side in our shape. And let's think of these as regular polygons so they each have the same size. So to find this draw method, we can do something like for i in range self.sides. So we're getting whatever number we passed in here. And then we're gonna wanna go turtle.forward we'll say, let's say maybe 100, uh, 100 pixels. And then turtle dot, hmm. Now we need to turn a specific angle. So if we're doing a square, we would need to do like turtle dot right 90 degrees, and as you can see, we have to pass in the angle to this function. Uh, turtle dot right 90 degrees. This would allow us to do a square, but we need to be able to do this for any shape we pass in, so we'll have to probably edit our init method a bit to give us an angle too. Well, let's just start with seeing what a square would look like. And I'm gonna just end this method with a turtle dot done. I might end up putting this somewhere else, but for now, we'll leave it here. Okay. So now let's go ahead and do square.draw and see what happens. Look at that, we just drew a square using the turtle library, that's pretty cool. Okay, so we knew we had to turn right 90 degrees for a square, but let's uh, abstract this away and make it more general, generalizable so we can do any shape using this right method. So if you dig back into your high school geometry days, you might know the formula for interior angles of polygons, but if you don't, Here's a helpful little chart we can use to kind of get the details on what our values are gonna be. So the sum of interior angles of a triangle is 180. The sum of a square is 360, 540, et cetera. And the general formula for any polygon is n minus two, where n is the number of sides, uh, times 180 degrees. And then if we want a specific angle, and that's what we do want in our case, uh, it's n minus two times 180 divided by the number of sides because if you have a total of 360 degrees and four sides, each angle has to be 90 degrees and that's the interior angles here. 
So let's start writing some logic into our class that captures that. So we could define a polyo polygon interior angles property that is equal to, well, it's gonna be equal to the number of sides, that was the end part, minus two, and we're gonna put this in parentheses, times 180, right? That was the interior angle sum. So you can maybe define this uh, like sum of angles, interior angles, whatever you want. So that would be the all the angles. If we wanted just the individual angle, it's gonna be equal to self.interior angles divided by self.sides. And now we've defined two more properties of our class. And these ones are computed on initialization. So it doesn't matter, it, it depends on what number of sides we pass in. So let's see that now in action. If I do go back to what we were printing out before, and I did print square dot, uh, let's say interior angles, and I did print square dot angle. This should give me 360, and this should give me uh, 90. Let's see if it does. Look at that, 360 and 90, cool, cool. Okay, and now what we can do is pass in that angle here so we can do self.angle because we can use the self method or the self parameter that we passed into our class method to access the self.angle that we initialized on the creation of our class to turn right 90 degrees. Okay, cool. So let's see if now with passing in this, we get the same result of that draw method. So we're gonna do square.draw. And notice I don't have to pass in self here, which might seem a little bit strange, uh, self is the one thing that's kind of just known to be there. So whenever you see self, you can kind of think about, you, you don't have to include anything there. You just skip it. It's like it's not there when you're actually trying to define, or to utilize a method. Um, you just use what it's after yourself. So like when we initialize the polygons, we initialize the stuff after yourself. And when we use draw, even though there's self in it, we don't have to pass anything in it. That's a little weird at first, but it, it should make sense over time. So let's do square.draw. Look, we get that same square. All right, real test will be though, does it work with pentagon.draw? Come on, draw a pentagon. Ah, no, why did it not work? So when we're doing turtle.write, we're defining this exterior angle. So this right now is what we defined by self.angle, but we really want it to be this interior angle. So to uh, compensate for that, we're gonna just need to take the complement. So if this interior angle here should be 108, we need to do 108 or 180 minus 108 on the outside. So we can actually define, when we to do the right method, we can do 180 minus self.angle and that should be give us the right result. Look at that, we got it, cool. All right, and let's check to see if it works with like maybe a hexagon. Let's just make sure that it's actually working pro properly. So I can do hexagon equals polygon, and that's gonna have six sides, and I'll call it hexagon. Um, that is good. And now let's do hexagon dot draw. Look at that, it's calculating those angles correctly. That's pretty sweet. Uh, one thing I think it would be nice to do is right now we're passing in 100 always here. We could pass this in as another variable to our polygon. And so we'll do size and we'll say self.size equals size. So now when we define these, we have to pass in like 100 here. If we don't pass in 100, see what happens. It gives me this long error. And ultimately this is the important part of the error. It's missing the one required positional arg argument size. So it's erroring out because we didn't pass in size and we included that in the init method. So it doesn't know what to do. So we can pass in 100 here uh, and 100 here. And that would like allow us to define those properly. We're gonna get the error again down here. So let's say we wanted to find it as 10 to start. And we've passed now in our draw method, we should do self.size instead of 100. So let's see what happens. Look at that, it's 10 is a little tiny hexagon. And if we did 100, 
should be a bigger hexagon. And it is. Cool, cool. Um, but maybe it's like annoying to, you can imagine we could just keep building out the number of parameters we want to pass into our polygon. And it would be annoying to have to like include every single one when we define our classes. So what we can do is the same as we can do with functions is we can give it a default argument. So let's say our default argument is 100. So now I can define it without these parameters and do it for all three. Ah. And now it won't error out on me because it will just know that if I don't provide this size, it will default it to 100. So watch what happens when we draw the hexagon. See, it's a normal big hexagon. But if I go ahead and make that 10 here, it will override that default value of 100 and allow us to draw it at size 10. And it works, cool. And you can imagine we could start getting fancy with the type of things we pass in here. So maybe we also wanna be able to provide a color for our polygon. So let's say the default color is black. Um, we can use turtle. And this is just something I know about turtle that it accepts words like that. I could do turtle.color is self.color. And I need to define self.color here. And now it will draw the shape based on the color we select. So we have black line there. And if I wanted to do a different color, I could pass in, I could either pass in both a size and a color, or I could just define that I want the color to equal, let's say red. And as you see, it's red. And you can imagine I could, you know, maybe pass in the thickness too. So thick, line thickness and that's going to equal let's say like two pixels to start by default and within turtle i think there's a way to set the line thickness turtle dot let's see if we can use a lot utilize this documentation what other things we initialize and look at this all this documentation has a lot of helpful things uh pen size that seems good to me so i can do turtle dot pen size and probably pass in self dot size and let's see what happens when we draw oh my god what is the what is the size of this oh my god oh oops i did self dot size here instead of uh self dot uh <laughs> line thickness okay so i'm gonna pass in self dot line thickness equals line thickness that was a class classic mix-up Okay, and now we could pass in, you know, maybe, t maybe make three of the default value. And I think this is in pixels. But if we wanted a really thick hexagon, I could pass in, you know, line thickness equals 20. And as you see, you get a, a thicker polygon. So we can do all sorts of cool stuff, but maybe we just want by default to just have to pass in the, the you know, number of sides in the name. Just to drill down a point on what the heck self is, let's imagine we had to write this draw method outside of the, outside of a function. So we could do, let's define draw function. So in this, we need a color, we need a thickness, we need sides, we need size, we need an angle. So we need a bunch of parameters. So I could say sides, uh, size, angle, line thickness, and color all as parameters to the function. And then I could basically copy and paste this in. And now instead of, you know, self, we do this. You know, we're not using self anymore. We're using these parameters we passed in. And you know, this still works. So we could still call, instead of doing draw down here, we could call something like draw function, uh, five sides, uh, size 20, angle, uh, I guess this is now not pre-computed, so I, I would have to figure out the angle, well, it would be 108, I guess, line thickness four, color red. Uh, we can do this and it's still gonna work for us. The thing is, it's just really annoying not being able to utilize like something we've already kind of predefined, pre-computed some things, it just makes our life more difficult to not use the class method.
So self is really helping us by allowing us to access all of these things that we initialize at the creation of our class uh, in a nice succinct manner. All right, we can delete this because I was just using it as an example. And also, I'm going to have all this code on my GitHub page, and that's linked to in the description. But for the time being, I'm going to just delete some of this stuff to kind of make the code a little bit cleaner for now. All right, the next topic we're going to talk about is the concept of inheritance, and specifically, we're going to be talking about subclassing. So let's say that we wanted to define a class that was specifically a square, but we didn't want to have to rewrite a lot of this logic to draw a square and, you know, to define the number of sides, what not a square has. We can utilize this polygon as kind of the parent class and make a subclass called square that utilizes it. So we can do class square, and that's going to be a subclass of polygons. We have to pass in polygon to specify that square is utilizing polygon. And what we can do now is we can define an init method for the square. So we can say something like def init, just like we did before. We're going to pass in self like we always do. And if we want, we can pass in all of these same parameters. Or actually, we, we <clears throat> and then we're going to decide what parameters we have to pass in. Well, for a square, we know that the size is always going to be four, so we don't need to pass that in each time we define a square. We know it's going to be called a square, so we don't need to pass that in. So we can just utilize these last three parameters and pass those in. And then to specify that these always have four sides and always are called squares, we can use the super method in Python. So we can do super, and that's basically say, saying take from polygon. Anything from the parent class, the super class, we're going to utilize it using the super method. And we do super dot init. So we're getting the initialization method from polygon. And we're going to pass in four for the number of sides. We're going to pass in the name square. And then we're going to pass in all the other stuff. So size, color, um, line thickness, etc. Okay, and now we've initialized that. So one thing that's really cool is just by utilizing this now, we can define a square and get access to all of the properties that we normally have in our polygon. So let's define a square. So square equals square now. And I can just do that. I don't have to pass in the number of sides or the name anymore because we're created a subclass of polygon called square. And does that give us an error? It doesn't give us an error. And watch, we can even use like square.sides. We can print this out. And we can print out, let's say, square.angle. So this should be 90. So it should be four sides and angle 90. And look at that. Just this thing utilized the initialization method of the parent class. And we were able to get the angles and you know define the sides through this. Uh, so this is kind of a neat little trick, uh, and subclassing allows us to like get very complex with our code because we can create these structures that reuse code instead of having to rewrite it from scratch. So subclassing allows us to you know really utilize um, previously written code and not get too verbose and you know rewrite things we've already written. So if we have a mistake one spot, usually fixing it in that one spot will fix it all around. So this is a nice little thing about subclassing, and to drive this point home, we can even use square.draw and get access to that from the initialization method and from this being a, a subclass. So square.draw. Look at that. We got a square. And if I wanted to, I could pass in, you know, like color equals, let's say we wanted a hexadecimal color. So one, two, three, A, B, C. I don't know what color this will be. We'll find out. Uh, so that gives us some sort of blue. Um, we could pass in, you know, a, let's try to pass in sides equal five, see what happens. And it's going to give us an error because that's not a part of the initialization method of the square. So that's kind of nice. It keeps people from trying to like trick the system and define a polygon with sides four, but name like pentagon, let's say. Uh, da, 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 da. We could do size equals 200. Big, big, big square. Cool. This is awesome. Another useful thing to know about subclassing is method overriding. So let's say we wanted to take the polygon draw method and do a little bit more to it. So what we can actually do in our subclass 
is override that draw method. So we can do draw def draw self. And maybe we wanted to fill in, not only color it based like, like this, but actually fill in that color. So I'm gonna do turtle.begin fill. This is just a turtle method. You can watch my video on tutorial uh, on turtle if you wanna know all about it. Turtle.begin fill. And then we're gonna use super.draw. So we're gonna copy and paste basically the code from up here in the middle and then turtle.endfill. And just because I know that we're gonna get a problem because I left this turtle.done in here, I'm gonna remove this from the function and actually put turtle.done down here. And that just keeps my screen open when I'm done drawing. So let's see what happens now when I do turtle dot or begin fill. Look at that. We surrounded the normal method, the draw method from here, basically. We used it in our subclass and added a begin fill and an end fill. And now we get some like extra functionality, which is pretty cool. Okay, that will cover subclassing. Let's move on to another example that will cover a couple more concepts with classes before we end this video. In this example, we're gonna define a point class that we'll use to cover a couple different concepts. So to define that, we can start by doing class point, and we'll need to initialize some things for this. And so anytime we define a point, we can think of these as being two dimensional points, so we need an X and a Y. And I'm just gonna set them like this, self.x equals X, and self.y equals y. Um, and then I can go ahead and right there we have a point class. So I can say a, or like let's say point one equals point four five. And if I did point print point one dot x, we'll get an error. <laughs> I don't know what I did here. What did I do? Oh, we got to pass in self. There we go and we get four. Cool. Uh, so the next thing you might wanna add to a point class is maybe we want some way to plot this point. To do that, we'll import matplotlib. And we will do the following. So we'll define a point dot plot. So def plot, that will just take in self and we can do a plot dot scatter. I think we can just pass in self.x, self.y here. And I think if we just do that, let's see what happens. So I'll say a equals point three, four, uh, a dot plot. And then I think we have to do plot dot show to actually see our graph. And we got a, a point right there, cool. Okay, so we have a point and we can plot the point, that's cool. What if we wanted to do something fancy? Let's say we define two points. So we have one point that's one, one, and we'll define B as the point two, two. So let's say we wanted to be able to make a third point C that was equal to A plus B. Let's see what happens when we try to run that. And it gives us an error. What is our error? Well, it says unsupported operand types for plus, point and point. So it doesn't know how to add this point class that we defined. So this gets us into the concept of operator overloading. So we can actually override the default like plus for the point class. And so we can actually make it know how to add A plus B, even though it's not like a built-in Python type. So to do that, we can define another kind of special type in the class called under underscore add. So it has a similar syntax to the init. Um, and it, we can do self comma other. So basically, if we imagine that the other is a point type, if we do cell or like x equals self dot x plus other dot x and y equals self dot y plus other dot y. So this is assuming other is another point then we can return a new point, which is these new coordinates X and Y. So X is being the addition of these and Y being the addition of these. So let's see if that works. No errors. So the moment of truth comes when we try to print out something part of C. So C dot Y and C dot X should both be three. And is that the case? 
Look at that, three and three, looks good. And real quick, I think it's useful to see, we can overload all sorts of different operators in Python. So we just overrode the add operator, but we can overload tons of different stuff. So I'm gonna bring in a helpful little cheat sheet and I'll post this in uh, the description of the video. But as you can see, you know, you got the binary operators, we can do all sorts of stuff, division, floor division, modular, uh, we can do greater than signs, greater than or equal, greater than or equal to signs, uh, all sorts of interesting stuff here. Uh, and this is only like a sub list of everything that you can actually do. Building on this, let's say I wanted to do, maybe we'll, we'll change up our points. So instead of doing A and B, we'll do, we'll just define A as being maybe zero, two. Um, and let's say we wanted to create a new point. I'm going to just call this point D, which is equal to A plus five. Well, five is now no longer a point. So if I try to do this, ah, what did I do? Um, if I try to do this, we're going to get an error. Uh, and int object has no attribute X. So it like can't do this command. So we can account for this. We can allow ourselves to add different types to the point class. So what we're gonna do to handle this is we will say if is instance, and we're gonna pass in other, and if it's an instance of the point class, I think this is how we use it. Let's check the documentation for is instance. So it's the object, and then I think the type. So if is instance object of point class, then we want to do this. Elif, um, maybe honestly we can just kind of encapsulate all the additions in the else case. We can say x equals self dot x plus other and y equals self dot y plus other. So the reason I left it as else is I wanted to be able to handle not only ints that we're adding to it, but maybe floats. So like decimal numbers in addition to integer numbers. And then we would want to return a point of x, y, just like we did in the above case. So let's see what happens now if we do a plus five. Didn't give us an error. Does it work? D dot x. So it should be five here and d dot y should be seven. So let's print that out real quick. Let's see if it works. Look at that. And if we go ahead and actually add another point to this, we can see that it still works with the original code. So let's say point one, one. See, we can now add two different types. So that's pretty cool with the operator overloading. All right, we're gonna end this video here. Hopefully you guys feel like you learned the basics of classes and kind of how you can use them effectively. I couldn't cover everything about classes in a single video. So if there's certain things you feel like I left out, let me know in the comments so that I can include them in a future video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to throw it a big thumbs up. And also if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And then the final thing I wanna say before I go is, if you thought Kite was cool throughout this video, make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Thank you again, guys, for watching. Until next time, peace out.